Parita vana metang sameta babanta. Avi kita chita paritang bananto. Salmantra chakra vale suatra gachantu devata. Sadamal munirajasa sunantu sagamokadang. Sage kame charupe. Kiri si karata te chantali ke wimane. Dipera te shakame taruana kahane ke havatum hikete. Buma chayantu dewa chalatala visame yaka ganda banaka. Titanta santi ke yang muni wara wacanang sadabo me sunantu. Buddha dasana kalo ayam badanta. Dhamma savana kalo ayam badanta. Sangha parirupa sanakalo ayam badanta. Please, you know, find a posture you can sustain for about um, 45 minutes or so. And, uh, you know, just becoming aware of the body and paying attention to the spine. The spine needs to be straight and uh, erect. So that the breathing can come in and out of the body without any much hindrance. And then maybe also for a short moment paying attention to your jaw and to your face. We tend to hold a lot of tension there also. And just you know becoming conscious of how it feels. Nothing do you need to do, but just becoming conscious that alone you know helps to release. And allowing the mind to rest on the body breathing just in the same manner as the body rests on the cushion or on the chair. So a sense of embodied mindfulness, embodied awareness. And then arriving here in our communal virtual space, Just for a moment, bringing to mind, you know, why are you sitting here? Why are you meditating? And I'm going to start now with a guidance through the four foundations of mindfulness, which is like the template of a meditation practice in the Pali Canon, and uh, with an emphasis on the first foundation, arriving and settling. So I'd like to start with... Uh, you know, becoming conscious of earth element in the body. That's one of the uh, meditations which are given in the first foundation of mindfulness, meditation on the elements, and we're just going to 
you know, meditate on the earth element and to first, you know, make a connection with earth element, which is all about hardness, solidity and structure. Just tap your teeth together and directly experience the hardness of earth element. So it's not, you know, the meditation instructions, they don't tell you what earth element is. It's not descriptive, but it's prescriptive. The meditation instructions for the Buddha, you know, give you uh, guidelines how to for yourself individually experience, for example, earth element. So first, you know, we know what hardness is by tapping our teeth together. And then we start with scanning from the top of the head with my guidance, scanning down the body, finding earth element. But it's not like in a way, you know, you have to make it happen. It's just, you know, have that intention to connect and to become conscious of hardness in the body. In particular, we can connect with that in the bones. We can just start on the top of the head with connecting with the hardness of the skull. Lots of bones, including the teeth, which are the tips of the bones, and you know, forming the skull, which is structure of the head. Without the skull, our heads would look very odd. So connecting with hardness, birth element. Then coming to the jaw and the teeth. Eternal earth element. The spine in the neck. And then go to one of the two shoulders. And feel the shoulder bone bones in the upper arm, lower arm, and hand, lots of little bones, hardness, structure, solidity, earth element. And then we go to the other shoulder, feel the hardness again in the bone, shoulder bones, Upper arm, lower arm, and hand. And then we go to the, then we go to the bone in the upper torso, the spine, and the rib cage. Then where the spine meets the hip area. The whole body is held through the skeleton. They have a, like a direct experience of that. And then the pelvis, the hips, hip bone. And then one leg, the upper leg bones, the thigh bones, very big bones, lower leg, and feet. lots of little bones again, including the nails. And then the other leg, upper leg, lower leg, foot, and nails. You know, that's a way how we are kind of inhabiting our bodies through a body scan like this. You know, bringing the mind down from the head into the body. So that's internal earth element. And then we can bring our attention to the cushion or the chair on which we are sitting which is a representation of external earth element and feeling the pressure of the buttocks on the cushion on the chair. 
and the gravity of the planet Earth, you know, which is pulling us towards it. Just, you know, letting go into that gravity, relaxing into that gravity. And let all the tension of the body just sink into the ground. And relaxing into the pull of gravity. And with the out breath, just allowing yourself to go deeper into the earth underneath us. And with the in breath, you know, just breathing in that density and peace of the planet and us. External earth element, which is vast. The stillness. So with the in breath, you know, we connect with the peacefulness and the stillness of the earth. And with the out breath, we just allow ourselves to go deeper into it, like five feet, 10 feet. If there's a feeling of a little bit hesitation, oh, scary, then you just stay where you are. And if you feel so inclined, you just can allow yourself to connect in a deeper way with the planet. So that external solidity and utter peacefulness of this vast planet Earth. We are part of that. And there's a constant exchange happening between internal ex Earth element and external Earth element. We are completely dependent on all of the external elements because internal earth element and external earth element are exactly the same. Just call it internal if it's inside the boundary of our skin and external if it's outside the boundary. But the skin itself contains earth elements. So it's just a concept is useful you know for daily life but in the meditation we can break through these concepts which ultimately do not apply you know if we don't take in earth element as food for let's say more than a month or up to two months i think you know the body cannot sustain itself And the same would be with all the other elements, water element, fire element, air, wind element, and space within which all of that is happening. So becoming aware of this process nature. A constant exchange which is taking place just you know in front of our nose or under our nose I think it's called and uh, very often we just tend to forget that and in this day and age you know where there is so many questions about environmental devastation you know, if all of us make an effort to really become more and more conscious of our interdependence in this way, I think it, we will be changed by that and we 
will be able, you know, to relate in a way which is more based on sanity rather than on the craziness of what's happening right now. So becoming aware of that process nature, becoming aware of impermanence at the same time. This is, we are not a thing. We are a process. In constant relationship with many other processes. That's, you know, what is called conditionality in the Buddhist teaching of Paticca Samuppada. So and then as a next step, you know, we just can make ourselves aware of the, the vastness of the earth element. doesn't end, you know, um, at the uh, walls of the rooms we are sitting in, but it goes out vast, vast. And it's a, it's a sphere in cosmos where there's many other spheres of earth element moving. So the limitlessness of this earth element Just reflecting on that, like the limitlessness just, you know, in front of you. Just connecting with that. And then to one side. Behind. To the other side. Limitless earth element. So we are sitting on planet Earth, supported by it in so many, many ways. We are it. So, you know, this is a wisdom practice in the sense that we realize you know more deeply a truth which is difficult to see if we don't pay particular attention and at the same time it's also a calming practice Where attending to our experience in this way the mind calms down And if the mind wanders off, you know, into thinking about something, just gently bring it back. If it's just a short little distraction. And if it's a, you know, a longer train of thought, just check, you know, what kind of a feeling tone is involved in that train of thought. Is it pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral? That would take us to the second foundation of mindfulness, Vedana feeling tone, you know, just, just get a handle on the thought processes, just for a moment. And, you know, if the train of thought was connected with pleasant feeling, most likely it's a, you know, mind state of uh, greed or desire. If it's around, built around an unpleasant feeling tone, most likely it's going to be a train of thought, a story around uh, aversion, ill will. And if it's just like neutral, if it's not clear, it's probably, you know, ambling around aimlessly, thinking about this and that, daydreaming. 
just recognizing that that would be then you know feeling tone is second foundation of mindfulness state of mind third foundation of mindfulness and the feeling tone connects the foundation of body to the third foundation the mind state you know we are we are grounded in the body aware of the feeling tone of our experience and also check you know what is is the mind free temporarily of any particular stories or is there a story of desire of wanting something a story of not wanting something or like an aimless wandering and you know by bringing in these uh, ways of looking that you know really helps us to step out of the identification with the story and to just see in a snapshot you know okay that's happening dropping it and coming back to being with the body sitting and breathing in and breathing out And if the mind is, you know, not mulling anything over right now, then experiencing a temporary liberation of the mind, We're just being with the mind as is, aware of the body breathing in and breathing out. So the main theme of our meditation is just being grounded on the earth and supported by the earth and you know noticing the constant exchange between our body and the earth. And you know, if the mind is capable of staying in the present moment with that which is happening right now, there's a sense of relief, a subtle joy of being in the present moment. Just, you know, uh, tasting that subtle joy and really, you know, noticing it's much how much more preferable it is to not be caught up in any kind of wanting or not wanting. To just be with what's happening in the present moment, which is nothing else but the body sitting on planet Earth and breathing. That's what's happening. You know, and this is an acquired taste because in the beginning it it seems to be a very boring kind of an occupation. But then over time we start to taste that subtle joy which is coming from really being fully in the present moment, the sense of relief.
you know, not spinning a story, a habitual way of being afraid or a habitual way of wanting something else, but just being able to put it all down just for now. And uh, flavoring and really savoring rather this uh, temporary liberation of the mind. And whenever the mind wanders off, which is natural, if it's just a short distraction, bring it back with a smile. And if it's a longer distraction, then checking, you know, what's the underlying feeling tone here, which, you know, hijacked me into a story. And then just see that, that helps to step out of the story. And then also seeing, you know, is there desire in the mind for different experience? Is there aversion in the mind to maybe some pain in the body or a feeling of boredom. Just noticing those features of our experience helps us to step out, to disidentify with the story. And that's, you know, where the learning lies. To see the conditionality, how the mind is just, you know, a conditioned process and once we start to understand and we have the right tools, we can you know, have a choice. We can decide in which direction we want to cultivate. And that's you know, what the teachings of the Buddha are all about. There's a toolkit so we can enact some conscious choices which, you know, it takes time for those uh, trainings to really um, reside in a, in a, in a change, in a, in a sturdy change, but it doesn't take that long. A few weeks of meditation can already be um, seen, you know, to reside in very beneficial changes, which is called, you know, brain plasticity these days. So there's a real even hard science, so to say, you know, can uh, see those changes. So internal earth element and then, you know, the vastness and peacefulness of the external earth element, the constant interchange, the feeling tone of our present experience, the state of mind, that's the three the first three foundations of mindfulness. Kaya body, Vedana, feeling tone, and Chitta, mood of the mind, state of mind. So that's a way of looking at our experience, which is very different than what we usually do. Usually we get caught up with the story. But now we are rather looking at the structure. This is comforting, you know, to not go under in the story. Body, feeling tone, state of mind. 
very simple. You know, to have this on our fingertips in daily life can also be very helpful. And if we have trained ourselves to notice those three foundations, can help us, you know, to make the right choices. What to say, what to do at the moment. Not just being caught up in a habitual story of fear or greed. But rather, you know, noticing those happening in the body and in the mind right now, and then making a choice which is aligned with our true values rather than with a momentary feeling tone or a state of mind. Having a perspective. And for example, you know, what to reflect on in a moment like this would then be, a, oh, I've taken the five precepts, you know, that's, if I'm in a sane state of mind, that's what my values really are, the three refuges and the five precepts. And on having this uh, toolkit, you know, to meet our experience gives us a sense of, uh, you know, equanimity. sense of perspective. Just, you know, really savoring that uh, subtle joy of the mind, which is not caught up in any story temporarily. And now, you know, for the last part of this meditation, uh, you know, just becoming aware of the process of breathing, which is nothing else but impermanence, really. 
becoming aware of uh, impermanence. That would be you know, a reflection in the fourth foundation of mindfulness, which is about principles of conditionality or laws of nature, we can also say. And the Pali language is called dhammas, with a small d, lowercase d, which are phenomena. You know how phenomena operate. And the most outstanding feature is impermanence. You know, the body, the mind, the planet, the cosmos, all phenomena, small and large and vast, are impermanent. They are processes. And just giving room for that change to really show itself. Just being that flow, just putting down any agendas, you know, not rejecting, not getting involved, just letting it be. There is no one in charge of this. It is what it is, nature. And then, you know, however, the feeling tone, just give it space. Don't, you know, defend and go into some kind of story if you can. Just allowing, giving room to each thing to just take place, arising and ceasing. And all those phenomena, they all display impermanence to us. You know, and in terms of the progression of insight in the Buddha's teaching, that seeing impermanence clearly leads to dispassion, which means, you know, washing away of passion, washing away of desire. But really seeing clearly that which is impermanent can't be owned, can't be controlled. And by really allowing the mind to really touch that very intimately, the grasping and clinging is washing away. The raga in the Pali language. And raga comes from the Pali word rang, which means uh, to color. So the coloring, you know, of delusion, Greed, hatred, and delusion is washed away through the direct experience of impermanence. Very simple. And then, if there's a certain, you know, washing away of clinging, washing away of grasping, then the mind is more capable to attend to the ending of things as well which balances out our obsession with beginnings, you know, with wanting this and wanting that and always thinking the grass is greener over there. And if we have the capacity to see the whole spectrum, then this intensity of clinging gets washed out more and more. That's the process of uh, cultivation of wisdom and compassion. You know, being able to attend to the ending of things. Even, you know, the ending of our own life. You 
and allowing that thought to arise you know, with the in breath. This could be my last breath, and with the out breath, relaxing into the process. This is a cutting edge of impermanence, our own mortality. So in this way, you know, we are bringing it home that death is also part of life. The sense of, uh, you know, healing some misperceptions here. And, you know, no longer running away from the truth makes us actually more alive. You know, we are part of a vast mystery. In constant exchange with everything else. You know, and what a precious opportunity that we have connected with this teaching, which helps us to look in the right way. So that the mystery starts to open up. And that can really, you know, give us inspiration for our practice. We're not squandering this precious opportunity, however long it's going to be. We are using every conscious moment to cultivate our minds and hearts for our own benefit and for the benefit of others as well. So, you know, the Buddha has given us this toolkit of the four foundations of mindfulness so that we can start, you know, to understand better what we are a part of. And even, you know, you might not be able to put it all into words, but we can get a taste of the vastness of all of this.
and that might you know inspire us to really want to shift our identities from a very small preoccupation with the preferences of the ego to something much bigger. And that's really, you know, what in the end compels us to practice. Once we meet somebody who displays that possibility or we maybe read something or hear something, but there's this moment of, you know, the mind opens and yes, it's my birthright to become conscious of that much vaster context. And yes, there are practices which enable us, you know, to train ourselves to develop the subtleness and sensitivity of mind and heart to be able to see in this way, to connect in this way, and to become more alive. And to cooperate, you know, with this much bigger process. for our own benefit and for the benefit of others. Particularly in a time right now where there is a lot of uncertainty and at the same time a lot of possibility. to really listen with your whole being. <laughs> 